up with my Welcome. Greetings and welcome. I've got my little holiday sweater on here, so to speak, as we're moving into the Christmas season. And uh, we've got a little gift for you tonight. Uh, back in October, we had a guest on who is based out of Boston, and we had quite a discussion about the then upcoming election in November. And what we're going to be doing now is not turtling but we're going to be uh, bringing it to the fore, putting it on the table, examining it as to what happened in this state or what didn't happen, and uh, hopefully using it as a platform to go forward from there. So my, uh, my partner tonight is Mr. Pinto. How are you, sir? I'm well. How are you, Good. Ron? That's a nice-looking jacket. Yeah, so well, you know, you. everybody told me I should wear dark colors so yeah, that it, I don't. It, it makes you look even more slender. It's, it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. It's Thank a beautiful you, Ron. Thing. Thank Without you, further ado, why don't you introduce our, uh, our guest? Okay. Who's well, in, in a return engagement tonight. Yes, absolutely. I, you haven't left much on the table for me there, Ron. Well, you but can handle it. Listen, St Stephanie Davis is from Boston. She is a conservative libertarian, and she's politically active. Uh, at one time, she did a lot of work blogging, writing about Beacon Hill as the Beacon Hill uh, examiner. And she now has her own website called Massachusetts Matters. So we hope that uh, she'll pique enough interest in you that you'll visit her website after she talks a little bit about politics with us. So welcome back, Stephanie. Chris, Ron, good to Great see you both you. again. Great having you. Thank you. Massachusetts matters. Okay, what what was the matter? What happened? <laughs> well, you see, you, they say confession is good for the soul. <laughs> so I have to first and first and foremost fess up to the fact that I was wrong about the election, and uh, Scott Brown did not make it. And I can give you a little snapshot of what happened to me on election night. And you can extrapolate that both in the Commonwealth and nationally. So I usually vote absentee because I don't like to stand in lines. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I, I assumed wrong that the turnout was going to be low. So around 6 o'clock, I jump into my running calls and I run up to the polling place. Mm -hmm. And there was approximately 150 people in line ahead of me, which I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. 6.05. 75 minutes later, and I nearly froze to death, I finally got to pull the lever. But it occurred to me, if this is happening in this particular ward and precinct, mm -hmm. statewide and or nationally, I just had a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach that I had made a major miscalculation. And I did. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that was in any way related to the fact that Demos, um, the Soros-funded organization that has um, Elizabeth Warren's daughter as part of the organization, they're uh, not having to sue the Commonwealth, but getting a list of uh, every single recipient of uh, transitional assistance, I believe is the term that they use, had anything to do with that? Do you think that the Democratic Party used that list to get their vote out? That I can't speak to that specifically, but I can tell you that the Menino machine was out in full force. It was formidable. They left nothing when on, on the table. When we talked about this on your first visit, yes, <clears throat> the basic premise was that the Menino machine, and Menino specifically, they were pretty tepid about the whole election. They weren't really all that excited about Miss Warren, and as it turns out, they suckered us and well, out the I door they he went. Well, either wasn't. Now remember, he's been Mayor Menino has been hospitalized. He came back from it's Italy, Italy. Yep. but. I was getting two stories, either he wasn't, mm -hmm. or he was, or he was pressured, he had no choice, 
but to put the machine to work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for and and it was it's it's a it's a it's a formidable thing because these people are institutionalized in our schools they take the day off and they put up signs they knock doors they make phone calls etc well according to Holly Robichaud the blogger from the uh, Boston Herald one out of three state workers that we're paying for mm -hmm. took the day, which they're entitled to take as mm -hmm. a vacation day or a personal day, whatever. And I don't think they were at the Cape uh, playing golf. They were out there working for the party because they were forced to do this or because they wanted to or both. And in some cases, Ron, I believe she said that certain schools scheduled their professional development days so that the teachers didn't have to lose a day to vacation day. Excellent. And their professional development probably involved them getting out the vote. It was out. As I said, I live in the city. I saw it. I saw it firsthand just in my little corner of the wood, neck of the woods. And I said, if this is going on, if this is what's happening across the city, when I went to bed at nine o'clock because I had just I was frozen, I said, I don't, something's not, just didn't feel right. I just mm -hmm. got nervous and here we are but on the good side Ryan Fatman managed to make re-election and and Peter Durant made it so those are good things without a doubt yes so let's not it all told it could have been worse based on what I saw mm -hmm. and what the turnout mm -hmm. was it could have been worse but it could have been it could have been better I think so. part of it it goes back to the basic concept that um, about motivation that the the fear of loss is a greater motivator than the prospect of gain. And if you take a look at the basic approach that the Democrats used, they broke everybody down into little subgroups and they went to each one and basically said, if you don't vote for us, fill in the blank, you're going to be losing or a great threat of losing your benefits, your EBT cards, your social security, birth control, birth control. I heard the Medicare cetera, argument. Cetera, and I heard the student loan. I didn't hear anything about birth control. So I well, heard yeah. it. As I said, yeah, when I was those seventy-five minutes when I was freezing and kicking myself for not having taken an absentee ballot, I heard mm -hmm. that and I thought, I sure hope this isn't going on across you, the country. You, but, you bring up. A ver excuse me for for interrupting. I just have to because it's very relevant to what you just said. 75 minutes. There was an article in today's paper here in Worcester that what they want to do is figure out a way to expedite the whole process so that people in Worcester are not standing in line any more than 30 minutes. And they used the number of 75 minutes as the max. And they felt that that's just unacceptable. People shouldn't be forced to wait 75 minutes. Now, part of that is to facilitate the whole voting process so that there won't be little eyes next to their names. Just yeah. zip them right through. No yeah. problem. And this is the direction they're going in. So I've anyway. never done it. I've never st I have never stood in line 75 minutes to vote. I don't like to stand in line for anything sure. anyway, but I've never, I've never had that experience. But in 2008, you voted by absentee ballot. Yes. Because there were long lines in 2008, from what I had heard. I usually do. Yeah. I usually do. And I don't know why. I just I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go in and I'll get, I'll get in and I'll get out. Mm -hmm. Wrong. <laughs> but the thing of it is, the turnout was huge. Oh, it was. From your perspective, what happened? Why? Why were people so turned on to get out there and vote Democrat, which is basically what they did across the board? Well, part of it is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The prospect of getting cut off or not having, the prospect of losing something mm -hmm. that, you, that you've had mm -hmm. all along, you've become accustomed to. That was a big issue. Additionally, the Democrats are very good at get out the vote operations. They understand that all politics is local. Mm -hmm. Moreover, uh, I'm not, taking gratuitous shots, but the Romney GOT, the operation with the Orca, the disaster. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I was surprised because I thought, I never thought I would say Mitt Romney was uh, incompetent, but just that whole process was 
a disaster. I don't it, think it, that the, the Romney clan had any intention of winning Massachusetts. Well, there are other states. Yes. Uh, we're talking about. But um, the thing that crushes me when I hear it talked about is the news media will say, oh, the, the um, Democrats had a better ground game. Well, yes, you've got the teachers, the firemen, the police unions. You've got the Teamsters, the AFL-CIO, CIO, the SEIU. That's not ground game grassroots. That's paid hands. True. But it's and not that way in every you, state. I'm not talking about, let's take yeah. out Massachusetts. I'm talking about from a national standpoint, mm -hmm. when you're talking about couple of hundred thousand votes in in Florida you saw how close Florida was how close Virginia Ohio it didn't go well but there's different analysis of what happened in Florida I mean there was reports that there was hundred and forty one percent of the vote came out in uh, Pinellas it was it Pinellas County that where, where um, Alan West lost of course that's another I might Thoughts on so that, how do you get 141 percent of the vote to come out? I'll just say because we can't talk about it in full detail. We don't have enough time. But the Democrats are doing some very—it's not cheating—some very sophisticated metrics to get people to vote, and they're things that pass beneath the media radar, and they have a—they have a, a head start. Are these things passing beneath the radar, or? Or is the media simply turning a blind eye? No, they don't know that they're happening. I'll just call, I call them Jedi mind tricks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, let's just say it's based in academia, mm -hmm. and it takes advantage of what, we, what the social scientist world calls randomized control experiments. And it's a very effective way of motivating behavior. So when you, I'm reading the Victory Lab, if you want to know. And it's not, it's not cheating, but it's, it's very sophisticated, and we haven't caught up to that yet. And we've got a lot of catching up to do. So in terms of GOTV and messaging, it's, it's, very, it's a very sophisticated. It's mm -hmm. not just, just the people, the feet, but it's the, it's the mind tricks and the mind games and using the powers of persuasion. Mm -hmm. So when you hear things like Julia, that make mm -hmm. most people's eyes roll over. It's not meant for you. No. And it's not meant for me. But it is meant for a segment of the population that most people don't, they, they're not out there, they're not vocal, but they do pay attention in certain ways and the Democrats know how to find them. And it's, again, it comes from the academy, which unfortunately for the center-right coalition you saw 91% of the contributions from the academy went to mm -hmm. Democrats. Mm -hmm. So we're at, a, we're at a competitive disadvantage because we don't, we don't. The, the academy, can you define that for? Academia. Oh, the academy. I thought you. The universities, the yeah. Harvards, the MITs, sure, sure. The, where yeah. social scientists, this type of research is taking place. Mm -hmm. We don't swim in those waters. It, you began it, the discussion tonight talking about Scott Brown. Yes. Now, Scott Brown is as bipartisan as anybody has ever been. Yes. Scott Brown is an extremely attractive candidate from a number of perspectives. Gorgeous family, mm. hardworking guy, mm. um, good record, good voting mm -hmm. record for the two years mm -hmm. the man's been on the job. Mm. Uh, people clamor for bipartisanship, supposedly. Mm. Uh, he goes against someone who's had no political experience mm -hmm. at all, among other things. Mm -hmm. And granted, she had a machine behind her, mm -hmm. and granted, uh, she had the benefit of not, not having a voting record to attack, mm -hmm. or as he did, not just in that job, but, you know, previous years. But putting it all persp in perspective, incumbents are basically not supposed to lose. Mm -hmm. What happened? He was running... People like Scott, I like Scott, a lot of people like Scott, they don't like the National Party. So when he's running as Scott Brown, they're not seeing Scott Brown, they're seeing the National Republican, this Party. Is the Republican Party. So when she when Professor Warren said a vote for Scott Brown is a vote to put 
the Senate in the control of the National Republican Party, which is fine by me, it is not fine by a lot of people in the state. And that's what, in my opinion, that's what they were, that, that's what he was up against. And it's not him. I, I think he should run for governor because I think he doesn't have to deal with that anymore. Should and he I think run that, as a Republican? Yes, should he absolutely. Run as an independent? He absolutely should run as a Republican because people like him. And he doesn't have to deal with the Republican national. We'll just take that off the table. Mm. Because he can, you know, he, he can be swept out in another wave election. And quite frankly, governors and mayors, for that matter, have far more power, in my opinion, than senators. I think Scott Walker has done far more to affect public policy in a good way than a senator. And public opinion. I would rather be a governor or a mayor than a senator. I mean, he took over the state of Wisconsin was hemorrhaging mm -hmm. money. And he got some concessions that were hard fought for. But they're bearing fruit. Yes. And the, that's the, important. The fiscal situation yeah. in Wisconsin has turned around. Absolutely. Uh, dramatically. One of the things that, of course, the media doesn't really bring a lot of uh, visibility to <clears throat> is that there are more Republican governors mm -hmm. than there are Democratic governors. Yes. And the performance of those governors, yes. compare that to Governor Moonbeam. Yes out in California <laughs> part in, in mm -hmm. his second shot at the job mm -hmm. okay compare him to a Scott Walker to a Chris or Portman or Port or Rob Portman Kasich exact and on and Mitch on and on Daniels, and on and Susanna on. Martinez and we we're can... more than holding our own mm -hmm. with Congress yes we're a week as, as all get out is at the senatorial level yes and obviously at the top spot mm -hmm. so this is not exactly the tsunami that the media wants to beat no, the drum not at all. and say, throw the, you know, this is the Whig Party, get rid of the Republicans. Mm -hmm. okay. But where, where does the Republican Party go from here? In the state, again, I, I think we have to get candidates running for school committee. I uh, talked about the governor's council, mm -hmm. city council, local, local offices. That's where the mayhem is hatched. <laughs> By the time it gets to Congress, the national level, it's almost too late. Mm -hmm. If you stop it in these councils and these boards at the local level, you can kill it off before it works its way upward. You use the great word, the mayhem. Uh, there's a phrase that's being bantered about quite regularly now called the culture of corruption. Ah, oh, that's used, one of my favorite. Right, yes. <laughs> Speak to us about the culture of corruption. The latest incarnation, one Sheila Burgess, ah. former, or I suppose, well, I don't know, interim or soon to be former. Mm -hmm. The dog ate my employment records. Isn't that That's something? another, <laughs> just, just disappeared. It, no, the governor admitted that they had been, Ms. Burgess was the, is, I suppose, the director of highway safety in the mm -hmm. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, who it turns out has zero qualifications for the job, apart from the fact that she's been a longtime Democrat operative working on the Kerry campaign. I rest my case. James McGovern, Congressman McGovern. Absolutely. And Worcester's own Lieutenant, Lieutenant, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Tim Crash Murray. So Ms. Burgess ran into trouble literally mm -hmm. in a rock outcropping. <laughs> She's cracked. <laughs> she smashed, what is it with the driving? Oh, well. She smashed into a rock outcropping in a state automobile. And the Globe, of all things, of all people or entities, did an investigative report and found out that she has had 38 separate driving incidents of all kinds. Yes, and uh, you know, since you're not too familiar with Worcester, she uh, would actually be qualified to be on the city council because, you know, we've, we've had our history with uh, councilors who have single car accidents with, I think it was trees. And she had a single car accident with a boulder, I believe it yes, was. Yes, on the South Shore. So, yep. No sure. qualification. And when the Globe did an editorial, when the Globe editorializes and mm -hmm. castigates all parties involved, you know it's bad. And I understand that Lieutenant Governor Murray is the go-to man for patronage in this administration. Well, it's, things happen. You it's, know, it's, it's always funny how when there's a grand jury out on something, a big scandal like this, that 
it always seems to take a huge pause right before an election. So that stuff is winding back up. But speaking of trials, today was the second day of the jury deliberations for oh, yes. Tim Cahill, the independent. And who, no resolution as of this taping. And the Boston Herald said that this is what Marsha, Marsha, Marsha is betting her whole future on. That'll revive her career and if Tim Cahill is convicted then she'll be in the number one spot. She'll be in the poll position, if you will, if you're a racing fan, for the race for governor. And if Tim Cahill is convicted, then maybe she'll go after a few more people to up her profile even more. <laughs> I don't know why they turned against Tim. He did them a favor. Without a doubt. No good deed goes unpunished. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't it amazing? No qual. I just the only resume enhancer is having worked for a long line of Democrat politicians. And again, I, I reiterate, this is all that's required, because once you're in the family, we take care of you. That's this is the bottom line. But you see, in all series, we see we use cynicism to mask our fury and anger. Mm -hmm. But the true reality of it is that there's no opposition party, so they do whatever they please. And when, there's no punish, there's no, there's, there are no consequences. When you have not one, not two, but three consecutive individuals who have been speakers of the House. Yes. Possibly oh, a fourth. Possibly a fourth. <laughs> With probation, Still waiting for probation to continue. <laughs> Latest news was that Mr. DeLeo was visiting Worcester for grand jury testimony. DeLeo. DeLeo. Robert DeLeo. Yes, that was in the paper the other day. He, he was subpoenaed. He, well, yes. Oh. So he is, uh, he's going to pay some, he's going to take some trips out to Worcester. What is will that come where, of that, who knows? We are in Worcester. Is that where the grand jury is? Yes. Aha. And this is a federal grand jury. I yes, I believe, believe so because Marsha, right. Marsha, Marsha hasn't held any grand juries for any of our previous speakers. Oh. Well, Worcester is quite a scenic location, especially this time of year, and uh, we seem to have a number of issues that are happening that are involved with different different um, issues, such as the uh, the clerk involved oh, with yeah. the election commission and all of that sort of thing which is a real major uh, issue at this point. Will be the subject of another grand jury perhaps? At some uh, <laughs> no, I don't think it's going to go that It won't get deep. elevated that, to that level but it's um, it, it, that's a whole separate show unto itself but there's this ongoing series of, of missteps that people seem to uh, you know, walk just, away from without away any. From it. No yes. big deal. He's, Nothing happened in the air. Just move on. He's part of that, what, what some radio hosts have referred to in the city as sh the Shamrock Club. Ah. It's not meant to be a racist thing, but it's meant to be a reference towards the old days of Tammany Hall when mm -hmm. it was, you know, you're in our club and, you know, we're going to take care of you and we're going to rule with an iron fist. Well, there's this Shamrock Club, as it's so called, mm -hmm. that at the helm is Congressman McGovern mm -hmm. and uh, Lieutenant mm -hmm. Governor Tied to Sheila Murray. Burgess. He's tied to Sheila she, Burgess. As a matter of fact, he made the recommendation. Tied to the city clerk, tied to a great portion of our city council, and they're calling the shots. So we have a congressman running our city. And it's doing quite well, this city. It's just, you know, the economics is doing so great. and uh, Bond rating. Yeah, well, the bond rating's okay, but we keep building more and more low-income housing. I think we're at about 10% or 14% now. We're beyond what the state mandates. There's a limit. There's a statutory. Limit. Yeah, but there's no top limit. There's, oh, there's, a, there's, a minimum there's a minimum requirement. And we're shooting for 20%. And I suppose if we tr followed the money, the beneficiaries of the builders of this housing are... Mm, friends of the congressman, you might say. Associates. Friends of the Lieutenant Governor. Serendipity. Yeah. Isn't that funny? It just... well, welcome to Worcester. Yeah. I live in Boston, remember? <laughs> yes. Well, one of the other things we're seeing in, in the city, too, I mean, there are so many subjects to get into, it's insane, but there's lots and lots of Agenda 21 items that are little by little 
sneaking their way in. And it's a frightening, frightening issue. And most people, if I mention Agenda 21, have no clue as to what it's all about. And if I can ask you to do one thing based on this conversation tonight, Google Agenda 21 and do some reading. It'll blow your mind. Synonymous world, with loss of control. Thank you. Basically. Thank you. Which Perfect. is what all of this is about. We're losing control to hierarchies. One of the Indeed. scariest things of Agenda 21 is they don't want personal property rights mm. anymore. You, in Agenda 21, which is, this is a UN initiative that's been going on for what, 20, 30 years oh, yeah. they've been pushing this? And one of the greatest things that they want to see us lose is the owning our own land. What's well, control? Yes. Anything that, anything that they, they politicians can't control, they dismiss. That's why they dislike mm -hmm. private property rights, contracts individual accounts, individual initiative, private health vouchers, care. anything pri anything that they can't control, they want to destroy. Mm -hmm. to totally control. And that's why we have to, yep. at every opportunity, we have to, that's, all of this is hatched at the local level. See, there's nothing I can do about the UN. I can't, we can't go to the U, I can't go to the UN. No invitations for you? But we can do something. I can get to Worcester. I've been here twice. <laughs> you can come to Boston. We can go anywhere in this in in this state and organize. We can always control that. They haven't been able to take away from us mm -hmm. yet. We have so, a couple minutes to, to yes. wrap up. What are some of the things we should be doing? Myself, you watching this, etc. Give us some ideas. Well, I'm in Worcester, so again, we have you have an ally. I have a, I call her a spiritual, a spiritual ally. You've got somebody on the school committee who's paying attention. Mm -hmm. Why not tune into your local channel when the, when those hearings are broadcast? Mm -hmm. Make a phone call. It's, it'll be time. I know that you don't want to hear it, but it'll be time for elections at some point in time. Why not? Coming right around the corner. Why not put your name on the ballot for something local? Don't mm -hmm. focus on governor and the big things. Focus on something small that's attainable and it tends to build a rolling stone gathers moss it mm -hmm. tends to build momentum we have to focus on local issues and stop focusing on governors presidents mayors senators because those are if we can't win locally you can't win statewide and get involved that's that's get involved. and pay attention <coughs> you know now that the elections are over uh, one moment. of the suggestions I would have every week Every one of the votes are in the TNG. You can see who's voting for what, and you should be aware of those things, and you should be on the phone with your state rep, with your congressman, with all your elected officials on a regular basis, letting them know what it is that you think. But that's only when they work, Ron. That's they don't work, they work that much. Thank you. God. Thank you for coming back. Thanks Good for joining us, and thank you for watching us again, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll have another great show for you next week. Ron Mata, signing off. Thank you very much. Bye.